The Aggies have piled on the talent with a record class and a defensive line haul. We need to talk about this more. Well, you know what? If you want to talk about it, we'll talk about it. Do you guys have any idea what Texas A&M has done? I know you know they had the number one class. And I know everyone and their mother has their opinion of how they acquired that class. You better not tell Jimbo about it. But do you really have an idea as to just how good this class is? Fortunately, I have a piece of paper with some supporting evidence in my hand right now. We do padlock stats during the season. For those of you who are new, if you're around this fall, a padlock stats, that one stat that if you knew that and nothing else Friday before the game, you would have been certain of the outcome. Well, I don't know that I've ever done a padlock recruiting stat, but I'm going to right now. What if I told you, I want you to pause. I need you to put down what you're doing and listen to this insanity. What if I told you Texas A&M just signed more five-star kids in this class than the entire Big Ten Conference by two? What if I also told you Texas A&M just signed more five-star kids in this class than the entire S... Well, actually, not the entire SEC. Yeah, I'm just going to cut it because I want the sound bite. This is, this is so weak right now if you're watching live. What if I also told you Texas A&M signed twice as many five stars in this class as the entire ACC? That's a whole conference, a major power five conference with multiple schools in the state of Florida and a school in the Carolinas and a school parked right in the middle of Atlanta, Georgia. And Texas A&M signed twice as many five star kids in this class as the entire conference. Those are padlock stats in the world of recruiting. Uh, Jesse also tells me, just for good measure, they signed 18 of the top 100 kids in the country. Most recently, LT Overton out of, I think, Milton in Alpharetta, Georgia. They got him. That's another five-star defensive lineman. At this point, raise your hand if you're a five-star defensive lineman and you didn't commit to Texas A&M. I'd be easier at that point. So then I had another question today. The class is insane. That's my takeaway. I had another question today about A&M. And it was from one of you asking, should we be worried about some of these kids transferring because certainly they're not all going to get immediate playing time? Uh, no. It's going to happen. Certainly going to happen. Happens with everyone. It's just going to be a new concept around A&M because they hadn't recruited at this level yet. i uh, got news for you. No one has. It's the highest rated class of all time. What if, they, what if some of them do transfer? They're going to. Let me spoil the ending for you. Spoiler alert, if you don't want to know, turn the show off or mute it for five seconds. Not every one of these kids is going to start at A&M. What I'm saying is if you shaved off 30% of it, it's still one of the best classes of all time. And that's the way this works. That's the reason you recruit in the kind of numbers and with the kind of tenacity that A&M and Jimbo Fisher did. You know, sort of the short-sighted view of it would be how many five-star kids do you need? And then Jimbo Fisher looks back at you, Lindsay Lohan style, and says, the limit does not exist. I don't care if sliced bread tells you it does or your grandma tells you it does. Limit does not exist. You never stop. You've got to be, you've got to be almost maniacal about it because here's what he knows. He knows who he's got to play every year. He knows what injury has done to him and attrition has done to him. But he also knows in these big time games, in the games you've got to win to win a national championship, it plays out to where one or two big time players make one or two game-changing plays, and all of a sudden you win a football game 31-27 to 27, instead of being on the other end of it. And you never know when you sign them on signing day which of those big-time players you're going to need two years from now on the third Saturday in November against fill-in-the-blank. You just know you got to get as many of them as possible to put yourself in the best possible position. So you know that. You know not every one of them is going to pan out. But this worrying about some of them transferring, let them transfer. At this point, it's a privilege to be concerned about that if you're Texas A&M. It's a privilege to have those concerns that Bama has and Georgia has. Welcome to the party and don't leave. They don't plan on going anywhere. You ought to get your program. If you want to win a national championship at Texas A&M, you got to get your program to a place where it's a relief for those players to get to Saturday. Because what they face on Saturday nine times out of ten is easier than what they're facing in practice on Tuesday and Wednesday. When you've gotten there... Then you find out what they've known for a little while in Tuscaloosa or Athens. Then you find out what championship depth looks like. They're not there quite yet, but these classes, like the one they just brought in, 
18 of the top 100 in the country, more five-star kids than the entire Big Ten, twice as many five-star kids as the entire ACC. That's how you rapidly build championship depth. That's how you create these knife fights in practice every day and these battles for positions. And if kids are turned off by that, that's called a filtration process, just like in recruiting. When it comes time for kids to strap it up on the field and earn a playing spot and earn playing time, that's what you got to make them do. You got to make them earn it. We had Jimbo on signing day, famously, and among the things that he said that you didn't remember because of the sound bites, he said, we've preached competition with every one of these kids. We've told every one of them. We haven't guaranteed anyone play in time. Quite the opposite. We've told them it's going to be the battle of their life to get on the field here. That's good. That's good. You'll still have some attrition because kids don't get playing time. But the ones who left were the ones who you didn't need. It's just the way it works. You're going to lose some good players. You didn't need them to win a championship. The ones you need to win championships are going to lock down positions or they're going to keep fighting their tail off and practice every day. And you will have built a championship culture with championship depth and you'll see it at practice every day. You'll, you'll start hearing stories out of College Station with high school coaches or boosters or alumni, former players. When they go to practice, you'll scroll text ags or you'll scroll gig them 24 seven. You'll see these threads. I've seen it with other elite programs. And you'll see these threads that are three or four pages deep of someone who got to attend practice the other day. And they're gonna be wide eyed and they're gonna talk about the ungodly amount of competition and how physical the practices are and how intense it is. And you're gonna realize, those kids are gonna realize, it's harder to practice here than it is to play games. Everybody not named Bama or Georgia or LSU or whoever that we play, it's easier to face them than it is to face the dude across from me on the practice field. That's one of the steps to winning a championship at this level. And they're well on their way at Texas A&M. I hope that that fit the criteria for the question. Uh, the question was just talk about it. So I think we talked about them a fair amount.